I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this discussion of a frame relay DELSI, a data link connection identifier. We have seen these in some of the other videos here on YouTube or on my website, depending on where you're watching it, of course. But we need to see exactly what a DELSI does and also the two different ways in which a Cisco router can create a DELSI mapping. So I have created those two types on a Cisco router and put them here on the whiteboard. So we're not looking at a router as much as we usually do in one of my videos because I want us to compare these two whiteboards that I'll show you later in this particular video and also examine the output of the show frame map command just a little bit closer than we usually would. Now with DELCES, they do exactly what the name says they do, and sometimes we use the acronyms so often that we actually forget what they stand for, right? Well, what DELCES do is they identify a connection at the data link layer of the OSI model. There's one major difference between DELCES and most of the other protocols and services and, that you run into during your CCNA studies. There's only that one single number in a DELCE header. We're not going to have a source DELSI or a destination DELSI like we do with IP addressing and so many of the other features that we use on a Cisco router. Frame relay DELSIs are not advertised to any other router. And the dreaded phrase comes up locally significant only. That's what a DELSI is. And you'll hear that to describe other Cisco values as your studies progress. But this is really one of the first ones you see, period, in your studies is a frame relay DELSI. But again, they're locally significant only. And that means if we were assigned a single DELSI number by our frame relay service provider to use on multiple routers in the same network, that doesn't affect anything. And I mention that because, of course, if you saw the same IP address being used in multiple points of your network, just might have a problem there. But with DELCES, we are not going to have any kind of issue with that. Now, frame relay communication is achieved by mapping that local DELC to the remote router's IP address. And that's something you really need to keep in mind for your exam, because where a Cisco router won't let you map this incorrectly, as far as it won't let you map a DELC to your own local address. Of course, the exam questions probably won't be that kind. So we need to keep that in mind. When you're writing a frame map statement, it's always local DELC, remote router's IP address. Now this mapping can be handled either dynamically or statically. And those of you who have read any of my eBooks or taken a course with me, anything, you know that I'm very big on dynamic methods. Any time I can do something dynamically rather than statically, I'm going to do it. And it's not because I'm lazy, because it's more efficient to use the dynamic methods. But there is an exception to every rule, and this is a huge exception to my personal rule. I don't like to use inverse ARP, and that's what dynamic frame relay mappings rely on. It's not the most reliable protocol in the world. It's being used in plenty of places, so we got to know about it. And I'm not saying you're wrong if you use it. If it works for you, great. But it can be a little tough to work with. If you do have dynamic mappings, they're going to be seen as dynamic in the output of show frame map. Let me just highlight that for you because there's a lot going on here. You're looking for the word dynamic in the output of show frame map. This means that these mappings were created by inverse ARP. Now the preferred by some and more reliable method is to use static frame map statements. Now if you're going to use static mappings, it is a very good idea to disable inverse ARP before doing so. Because while that may be OK while the router is up and running, if you have a router reload and you've got static mappings and inverse ARP running on the same interface, they tend not to play well together. You can get some undesirable results as far as your mappings go when the router comes back up. Now to disable inverse ARP, there's a command you can run on the interface called no frame relay inverse ARP, but you want to run it before you open the interface. Because if you configure frame relay on an interface and then open it, inverse ARP is already running. It runs by default. Here's the command 
no frame relay inverse ARP and then you can just go on and create your static mappings with the frame map command and assuming that this interface particular interface was shut and then opened this is what you would get we have show frame map and notice the real difference between this map these maps and the ones we saw earlier is the word static one little detail there but it's very important for the exam and the real world as well is that you really want to watch the output of show frame map this is really the first command you should use for troubleshooting frame relay as well in my opinion because it's also going to show you whether you have broadcast capability enabled and frankly whether it's active in the first place a show frame map is an excellent command to begin your troubleshooting with and again always watch out for that static and dynamic here in the output of show frame map and as for these frame map commands again just a reminder following frame map and then the protocol you're always going to put the remote IP address and then the local DLC and if you so choose and you probably will that broadcast option because without that your routing protocols that you run over this frame relay uh, configuration are not going to be able to function properly without that. Hope you enjoyed this look at frame relay DLCs. Like I said, I've got some other frame relay videos on my website, thebryantadvantage.com, as well as on YouTube, if that's where you happen to be watching this, including a very popular frame relay switch video that even if you don't have a Cisco Home Lab, I do recommend you check that one out. I invite you out to the website, over 250 free tutorials at last count, all Cisco certification videos, practice exams, all kinds of great stuff. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.